Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Friday, 10th of August, um, Industry Rumble 5 at Bruce Colosio Productions. I'm Kerry Davies, I'm here with the one and only Barry Robinson, all the way from New York. If you don't know Barry Robinson, guys, he's from Million Style Boxing, check out his Instagram page. Um, yeah, good evening, Barry, how, how are you tonight? Good evening, Kerry, it's really great to be here with you, I'm really excited, man, great atmosphere, thanks for having me. Yeah, good stuff, it's good for you to be here, it's been nice, interesting to see your take on the Auckland boxing scene and uh, how it differs from that over in America. You know, it's really just that the States is, so, is obviously so much bigger, so there's not, like Floyd Mayweather says, likes to say, US, you Americans don't support American boxes. This is because oh, really? there's so many people, so I really love to see this because you have local people, grassroots. And at the end of the day, everybody's going to support their home guys. So it's really different yeah, in that a, way. It's a very close-knit community. I, I vouch for that, yeah. The same London's a bit the same. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's kind of out-bagging each other and a lot, a lot more rivalry here. It's a bit more uh, unity, right. which is good. Right, right, right. But these two guys here tonight will oh, be Oh, we got a, we got a shimmy before, before Blue Corner got in the ring. Look at that. Confidence. Gave him a little, oh, give him a little oh, bit of a shimmy. Okay. I think he should settle his ass down, though, because Red Corner looks like... He's he in for it. To these guys, this looks like it could be a good he one. He came in with his daughter or whoever that was, and I think he's fighting for her, and that is a dangerous oh, man, Blue Corner. Boy, he does not like he's in a mood to play around tonight. I, I have to be honest, Red Corner, I don't know if he works in a post office or why he's so angry, <laughs> but he does not look like he's here to mess around tonight. <laughs> so fight number seven, we've got Thomas Davidson from New York Fitness. Is he in New York? Where's Barry? Hey, New York Fitness. Are you throwing me under the bus? <laughs> okay, if he wins, yes. He's one of our guys. <laughs> and, then, and he's um, facing Edward Kumar in the blue corner from Creo Manukau. Edward Kumar has successfully negotiated and smartly to be able to wear headgear in this fight. Okay. He's going to need it, I think. Is it me or is the blue corner... A young Prince Hasim in his he's got he's trying to be a bit Nazim. He didn't flip over the ropes and he didn't come in in a uh, flying carpet. But thank God, he's, he uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. I love Prince Naz though. Did you used to follow him? I, I, I love Prince Nazim. Oh, of course, man. You you got to have entertainment in boxing, oh, and I think the best boxers are entertaining, but they know their sport like the back of their hand. And Prince Nazim is one of those guys. Well, he was one of those who defies all the general rules of boxing, like keeping your hands up and uh, keeping your feet on the ground and. But, he, but if you think about it, he understood distance, That's he understood space in between his feet, and when you have those, you can get away with a few mistakes. Huh? That's right, yeah. And yeah, phenomenal power as well. So Kumar comes out in the southpaw stance, and surprisingly, he's catching catching a conventional guy's jab with his lead hand. Red corner wow. is going to run out of breath if he doesn't breathe while he's throwing those punches. Good start to the round. Very good start to the round. So Davidson there, with his easy to recognize with his name across his back. Well, Davidson's going to want to get a little bit closer with his jab. He doesn't want to start from that far out. And he wants to try to throw his right hand straight instead of so many hooks versus the southpaw. Yeah, again, he's tending to throw from his waist, isn't he? Which is not a direct line of for hey, You know, it's going to take a lot longer to get there from your waist than it is from your chin. Kumar doing something that I find really, really interesting is called the jab in space. Instead of trying to land it on his opponent, it just tells him what his distance is. And that is a very, very high-level technique. Okay, just post like a post out, you mean? Yeah, and it's it's a jab, but it's just in space. You don't try to land on a guy's face. Okay, just yeah, just 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 gives you a little bit of distance between. And yeah. that, there's a see a beautiful feint that backs him up that time. We'll see if we see that jab in space again. So far, Kumar is doing a pretty good job of managing the distance. You see, uh, yeah, good footwork. You see Thomas start to settle down and not reach so much for Kumar, and that's going to help him out in rounds two and three. Yeah, Kumar using his legs well. He's always, or he's right now he's trapped, but he's, he's moving away, using the ring well. I think what's saving Kumar from a lot of these power shots is he's catching, uh, he's catching Thomas's jab with his right hand, and if you catch his jab, then he's going to know his distance. So Brad, uh, Thomas is not able to land those shots from so far away. He's going to have to find a way to dis disguise his power a bit and get a little bit closer. That's exactly right. Yeah. So these fights heated up anyway. A little bit of uh, animosity going on there at the end of the round. Um, yeah, like you say, Red Corner definitely doesn't look like he's here to play around. And um, maybe a little bit of bad blood between the fighters, which always makes for an interesting scrap. But I have to say, I'm a bit surprised. I'm really happy with Red Corner because even though he threw, when he threw his hard punches, it wasn't the entire round. He had five to ten seconds interval work. Then he took a look, shot his jab. So he's not just rolling. He has a little, a little bit of a, a strategy yeah. to what he's doing. Nice, yeah. Um, strategic 
progression as such. I'd like to see him throw his right hand straight. I think he'd land it more often if he doesn't throw these hooks. Yeah. Takes too long to penetrate. Circle. Got to go through straight line. Let's see what Kumar starts this round with a little bit of movement and, of course, a feint. And there's your jab in space. And you see that jab yeah. Kumar's throwing has given him a lot of time to react to what Thomas is doing. I see you mean there, bro. Both of these guys throwing their backhand very loopy and not, and not direct. That was better from Davidson. Straight Thomas down the line. If Thomas straightens his right hand out, he's going to land it every time. But he's got to straighten it out. Versus the southpaw, you definitely want to throw it a straight line and you want to come back with your left hook as he tried there, but he was a bit too far away. I reckon when oh, Thomas is here, good body shot. And that's the best punch he's through this fight. You got to love the Kumar. Kumar's nice got the swag. He's got, swag he's got the swag going on, doesn't he? He's got the Mayweather or Princeton thing, like you say, a little bit. And he's the, out there and enjoying himself, and that's the best movement. way to relax, right? Yeah, he's got some good movements. This is a really, you know, we saw a bunch of different type of fights, and I got to say I'm very impressed with this fight. It almost looks like a professional rhythm in a professional fight, and both guys, both gyms, should be extremely proud of the way they represent the sport of boxing. Yeah, it's a good um, mixture of styles, isn't it? You know, you've got Kumar, has got the swag, got the movement going on, and then Davidson is a bit more straight down the line, a bit to the point, and aggressive and just come forward. And I like to see that Davis has made an adjustment, and you see him thinking, you see him fainting shots, not just reaching. So round three is going to be an excellent round. I think Thomas steals this round with those punches at the end of the round. Yeah, for me, I think Davidson, he's just, um, his work rates, he's, he's throwing more punches. I think yeah. Kumar's moving around, trying to look pretty and using his footwork, which is okay, but he needs more punch volume. You know, you're not, you're not going to win the fight by just moving away and, well, and the, throwing the odd jab out. That's the thing with a defensive style, is with a defensive style, a lot of times you're afraid to throw because you know that the more punches you throw, the more you're going to get hit. So it's trying to find that balance between throwing strikes, yeah, little, being busy while keeping an opponent not yeah. so busy. It's almost like the Triple G versus Alvarez, you know? One's coming forward, the other one's on the back foot and, and just nicking punches and catching the clean shots. But every now and then you've got to put, you put your foot down and show the judges, look, I am still in control. Even though I'm on the back foot, I'm still in control. You know who's really good at that uh, throughout his professional career? Uh, Lamont Peterson from, uh, yes. from DC. He's a guy that you look like he banged when he needed to, he could box when he needed to, okay. and uh, mm-hmm. do a little bit of everything. Yeah, he beat Amir Khan, one of my uh, favorites. He sure did. Yeah, he and, but him, actually, that's a, that right is a good reference. Sometimes it was dog, sometimes it was boxer. Yeah, okay, yeah, just knowing when to put the foot down. Right. When, when to put the foot on And the I base. think, I fancy Thomas is going to come out and go for it here. Oh, and, and there we go, he walked onto one there. I reckon if Thomas could be a little bit patient, wait for Kumar to stick his left hand out and come back with the right hand, he'll land it. He's going to take a little bit of patience, though. There it is. That was his opportunity. Uh-oh. So Kumar using very high elbows to block those headshots, and he's leaving his body quite exposed. He sure is, but he needs to throw some punches because he's losing these rounds. He needs to do something. The judges he, yeah. need to see Thomas's head snap back. Nice. There's one. But he's going to have to do it more than once. There was the first strike right hand Thomas threw and it landed real clean, snapped Kumar's head back. Kumar's kind of abandoned his feint since the first round, huh? Yeah, again, it's just his all-round body um, language. He just, he's just not doing enough, is he? Well, looking at Kumar's legs, I'd have to say that his legs are not underneath him. He's, he's moving his legs, but he's not using them. You notice his legs are not, never really bent with strength. Yeah. So he's not able to get Thomas' respect. I got to give Thomas a lot of credit. I thought he was a pure brawler, but he came in here, he boxed, he brawled, and he should be really proud of himself because that's a good fight. I know he wants to stop it. That's a good, that's a good finish there. Yeah, he's ground out the win there, isn't he, like you say? Good sportsmanship at the end. I know yeah. he was upset, but he go ahead and got the W, and that's the way you get it done. The win is a win. Very good matchup. I think they both could um, learn from each other, you know? I think um, they both could use each other's... Um, what's the word? The... Uh, attributes a little bit. In know? fact, they should spar each other. I think it'd be good work for yeah, both guys. Yeah. I think Kumar, uh, he fought really well. I think in the gym, when he gets back to the gym, all he needs to focus on is getting repetition. So getting boxing shape. So for example, if you want to move, then let's get three to 5,000 reps in the gym of moving. So yeah. that when you get to the fight, you, you won't get tired at all. I think uh, Thomas, when he gets back in the gym, he's got to be really proud of this film 
and one corner throw in a straight right hand, and he has a lot to build upon. Really yeah, good fight. Just throwing those shots in the face, but uh, another, another good fight. Another very good matchup. For me, that's six very, very well matched fights here, including Closure's production. So, um, yeah. Seven, even. It's nice to see how much it means to these guys, you know, when they win the fight and they uh, thanking their friends and family. Well, that's what it's about, right? Because they have to tolerate you while you're hungry. And <laughs> that's exactly right, yeah. And all these guys, they have some kind of motivation as to why they do it. So um, it's Absolutely. nice to just fulfill that. It's a really good fight from both guys. Uh, post so we're here with the Victor Thomas after a uh, war. How are you feeling? Yeah, great. Ready for another three rounds. Yeah, you just like went at him with so much aggression and power. You just knocked him back. Is, was that part of your uh, game plan? Yeah, so training, mate, just making sure I can get, keep the distance, slip his jabs, and then come in and rush him. How was training camp for you? Hard. How was training camp? Hard. Hard. Real hard. I love it. Yeah. How was uh, so you're training him as well? Oh, you're training him. How was he in the gym? Oh, he works really, really hard. Trains hard. First time he come to me, he spewed his ring up. But after that, we went well. We went really well. We'd like to thank you for fighting for prostate cancer. It's a massive honour. Yeah, definitely. Do anything for any cause that's worth it, eh? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's thank. Oh, thank everyone. My family, my wife. She had to put up with my training. Yeah, I train every day. Uh, twice a day sometimes. And then my trainer, Richard. Uh, my boxing bag, Dale, boxing bag, Josh, and my other boxing bag, uh, Andrew. Thank you, bro. Congratulations on your win. Thank you, bro. Alright, stop. 250. 250, bro. You got the 250.